Alright guys, how's it going back again today? Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. The Major 4 qualifiers are done and dusted and the bracket is officially set for Major 4 in Columbus coming up in just a few days time. Vegas have officially overtaken the Minnesota Rocker after the qualifiers for that final World Championship spot and have a chance based on the bracket to extend that advantage going into Major 4 itself. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Plenty to dive into. Obviously this series yesterday, Boston versus New York was pretty ridiculous and this loss for Boston was big because based on the way the tiebreakers and the map count and two and three went that gave them the eighth seed which gives them arguably the hardest possible time in round one up against Optic Texas themselves who are certainly the favorites for this event I wouldn't say they're runaway favorites there's other teams as we shall see in a second that are certainly up there but the only 5-0 team Boston of course lost to Optic just the other day but I feel like that match is going to be more interesting than some are potentially predicting and we'll get into exactly why in the coming minutes. Scum says, Sage for Online Qualifiers done. We are getting to a real crunch time in the season. This is when the best teams usually start to separate themselves. The first couple of stages of the season, people are still figuring out the game. We know the first event can always be pretty random. Subline has won the first event. I don't expect them to win anything else for the rest of the year, but they could potentially make a comeback towards the ends. That New York team reminds me a little bit of the Optic Texas team from last season when they started out incredibly well at Major 1, in large part because Illy was a monster at Major 1 last year. You guys remember that Illy was like had the best event of his career at Major 1 in Texas. They won it. And then, you know, since then, Illy wasn't quite the same. I could hear this thumb injury. Then, but even when he came back into the team, they couldn't get to the same level. Priester was unbelievable at Major 1 this season. Had the event of his career, probably, and was ridiculously good. Since then, hasn't quite been the same. I still rate Skies, Hydra most certainly, and Kismet. That duo is very good. But, um, you know, I don't know if they're going to be able to hit that level quite again. And they have a massive game against Vegas in the first round that we shall dive into. We've got to also mention though the other favourites I would say. If there's two teams I would say have the best chance to win this event, it's Optic Texas and it's LA Thieves right now. They're playing incredibly well. Now yes, Optic beat LA Thieves relatively comfortably it must be said when they played them just a few days ago but Octane has been ridiculous so far and if Octane is frying online what is he going to do on LAN? Because it's funny in a way that ever since Slasher said in that kind of post game when they beat her phase 3-0 at Major 3 and there was all the caveats from Thieves side that Kenny's controller had broken because the GV bottle exploded or whatever it was, destroyed his controller and uh, Slasher came on stage to say, oh yeah, I taught these guys how to play cards. Maybe Octane needs to teach Slasher a thing or two about how to play respawns right now because ARs are blessed man. I've been saying this as Octane, but um, his numbers in the respawns were ridiculous and this guy is usually better on LAN than online and I said a few months ago now, even going into this season, that I feel like Octane has a good chance to even be in the MVP conversation. He wasn't really there for the majority of the season season, but it can't be far away now. These are the numbers from the LA Thieves based on the Lion Man card. So if you guys are unfamiliar with exactly how these work, effectively what they do or what Lion Man does is um, these statistics in these categories, kills, hill time, damage, depending on the mode, of course, it varies a bit. First Blood, for example, in Search and Destroy, that is ranked based on that particular role. And uh, you're given a number from 50 to 99, depending on how good you are. If you're best in the league, that's a number one in that particular stat. It'll best in your role, at least, right? Best in your SMG or AR type departments. And then out of the nine categories, you take the two best rating numbers from each category, discard the worst one, because if you're frying hard but not getting hill time, it doesn't really matter that you're not getting hill time if you're still winning. You add up all those numbers, divide it by six, then you get your overall number, and then you add in the score at the end for the four and one record, that's plus three overall. So that gives Draza a 96, his search and destroy was outrageously good. Octane though a 92, especially Control, a 1.75 in Control over all the games they played. Like over five maps of control to a 1.75, like most kills per 10 in the league, most uh, deaths or least deaths per 10 in the league, right? And even his damage is very high as well. And Kenny actually came to play a lot towards the end of the uh, kind of the few matches they played as well. Positive in every mode. Yes, their search and destroy still isn't great, but their respawns, the only ones they lost were to Optic Texas, right? So to me, Thieves, especially when they get to land, and also these pro-am events in general, it's not a pro-am event, right? But these, you know, when they've been to Columbus last year at the pro-am, or even the kickoff event they did at the start of last season, 
They've usually placed very well at these type of events and I'd be surprised if they don't get top four at least. And Octane confirms himself as the highest KD of the stage, the best KD of the stage for qualifiers. These are the numbers over the last few stages. It was Hook back at stage one, Carl Boy, you guys remember he was unbelievable. But since then, Selium has been here a lot. Even Methods at Vanguard stage two was pretty crazy. And this year, Selium at Pred, Pred, and now Octane with a 1.32. I believe Selium was number two with a 1.2 something. You guys won't know what Selium typically does. But um, yeah, Octane takes that cake for now. Speaking quickly of uh, Envoy and LA Thieves before we discuss what the bracket's going to be, thought this was a little bit interesting here. He tweets at Dashy and basically just does like a wakey wakey type gif. I don't know if this is, of course, this was last night after they played their match, right? Up against the, um, who did they play? Minnesota Taraka, who they absolutely destroyed. Maybe what he's saying is like a, you know, Dashy wake up because we needed a warm up scrim. I don't know if that's what is going on, but that was potentially the implication that some people read into it. It was like, okay, maybe LA Thieves didn't get a proper warm up for their match because usually before they play a game, the teams will scrim them for a few maps just to warm them up. And uh, Thieves have definitely done that with Optic in the past. And maybe Dashy slept in and uh, wasn't there in time. So LA Thieves didn't have their warm up scrims. I don't know because they definitely came out kind of flat game one compared to how they performed for the rest of the series. Pretty interesting. Don't know if that's the case, but uh, we probably won't get any more on it than just this specific tweet. However, Thieves and Optic both are in going to be in the winner's bracket for the major and are comfortable at that. Now, I would say Thieves have the, probably the best chance of anyone to win their first round game. Optic, it's not exactly guaranteed based on the standings that we have here. So by losing the series in the fashion they did, 8 and 12 map count for Boston, that puts them as the 8th seed. If it had have been, if they won that or they won a few more maps in that series, they would have been probably the 7th seed playing Thieves round 1 and Rocker would have played Optic round 1. But these are the way the standings played out right. So Optic 5-0, and 15-3 oh, and three map count, one of the most dominant stages that we have seen from any specific team. Thieves though, not far behind at all, given the fact that they only lost to Optic Texas. Surge also 4-1, Subline is 4-1 and, and Vegas 4-1. Remarkable to think that a 4-1 team can be 5th in seeding, which is I don't think we've ever really seen that before. Yes, their map win loss wasn't great. They did just about get over the line in some of those series. They also won a three win streak, technically, Legion, which is also quite impressive. But um, yeah, four and one for them for the fifth seeds. They played the Subliners, which realistically is one of the best possible first round matches you could have asked for. Legion playing Surge, Legion playing Thieves. I feel like that wouldn't have gone so well. Legion playing Phase also. So one of the teams they could have played, Optic, of course, as well. Subliners are probably the one that they will feel like they've got the best chance against, other than playing teams lower down. And that leaves the bracket as follows. So Optic play brief. That's the top game. We will discuss in a second what this means for losers as well because these kind of correspond right. So the loser of the top game plays the top team. So Optic lose to Breach or Breach lose to Optic. They play Toronto round one which is going to be a mega game. So one of Optic, Boston and Toronto will be going home top 12. Like that is a guarantee and you would say probably Boston but I don't know what's going to happen here right. So Optic versus Boston is an interesting series. They did beat them 3-1 the other day quite comfortably in the hard points. Boston do slay hard, but they don't convert those kills. We've seen that over the last few days, certainly with their new roster. And I feel like if opt all Optic have to do against Boston, it feels in the respawns, is just slay equally to them and they'll win the respawns, right? Like, if as long as you get the same amount of kills as Boston do, you're probably going to win the map because you're going to do more with those kills. And Optic should be good enough to do that. But the search and destroy, though, I think Boston could do okay there. Boston are certainly good at control. They played in one LSCLO against Optic just the other day, so Optic might push it down to towards an expo control when they play that series again. Certainly have got a favor Optic, but I think this series is more interesting than if they played, let's say, Rocker, which I think would be somewhat more comfortable. But speaking of the Minnesota Rocker, right, they play Thieves round one. They've played four times this season, every time they've got 3 0 and now they have to play them again, which is probably just desserts in a way for losing in the manner that they did, but that's not pretty, right? Got to play Thieves again round one. If they lose that, they'll play Ravens, which again, should be a winnable series, but would I rather play Ravens? I mean, look, Ravens Ravens have come top 12 every 20 they've played, so they'll probably do it again. But I don't know, like, if I'm Vegas and I lose to subliners, which is possible, I play Florida round one in losers, which you should beat. Now, okay, Rocco might play London, which, again, they should beat, but you never really know. I think I might even prefer to play Florida than London if I was given the choice right now. But uh, Vegas against subliners is, like, that is the key game for Vegas this season. If they win this game, and I've said for some time that I've still not been convinced that they're going to make the World Championship, but the way Rocco have fallen off does make me more confident in that now. And if they win this series, I think they'll do it, to be honest. Like, um, you know, if they win this series, they get top six guaranteed. That's 20 points in the bag guaranteed. That's an incredibly valuable 20 points. So um, if they lose this series, they play Florida. And if they win 
that, they play either Boston or Toronto or even Optic potentially, which is probably going to be a GG. So I really think that if Vegas wants to make a run here, they've got to beat Subliners somehow, guarantee top six, and maybe they can even find their way to a top four. I think they're a good team. I'd still say that New York are favored in that series marginally, but um, I think they've got a decent chance, right? And Rocker could be, you know, probably top eight is going to be the limit for them because if they do beat Ravens, they will play probably Surge or FaZe. The loser of that goes on to play Gorillas in Losers and probably will advance as well. So, I mean, again, Surge versus FaZe, again, winners round one, like another banger, right? And if Surge beat FaZe and drop them down to Losers, like, um, I mean, FaZe or Surge, their Losers run is not going to be easy at all. So that is a very telling series. I think we've got a bang in winners bracket, to be honest. Optic would favor them to make a run, but the bottom side of this winners bracket with Thieves, Surge and FaZe all here, like that's crazy that only one of those teams could even possibly make it to the winners finals and the other one will be fighting through losers. So FaZe versus Surge has probably got to be the pick of the round one games, but I would say that Solanas versus Vegas also has massive implications, especially looking at the current CDL point standing. So it is official, Vegas have overtaken the Minnesota Rocker at the end of the stage four qualifiers. They are now pretty much, well, they might even be fighting for the seventh seed, right? Who knows? Only 30 points now to Boston, which is possibly overturnable given the fact that Boston could well come top 12 this tourney and everyone else is pretty much set. If we want to look at the details here, though, we can actually see as follows. So Optic are, despite not even winning anything Optic yet, I think it's impressive that Optic are 220 points, despite the fact that, you know, Subliners, Ultra and Phase of all won something, and Optic are still comfortably ahead of Subliners and pushing even further up than that. But Vegas, 130, Rocket, 130. But, um, you know, in terms of record, in terms of map win percentage, Vegas are ahead of Rocket right now. And if they can somehow capitalize on that going forward, they can make a serious run. And honestly, as I say, who knows even about the, the seventh seed might be available for them if Boston have a pretty hard time. Did want to say a few things on Boston because there were some discussions with makes the other day that, okay, maybe it's time to bring a Doug set to Martin for the team. Look, I'm not going to lie. I'd love to see it. It would be great content. I don't think they will do it. But it must be said that there are occasions where this team makes some serious errors. Even Awakening was tweeting in the Optic series about some of the spawns that he was getting on number seven here spawning so far away from the new hard point, which is, it's got to be said, a little bit difficult to explain. But Boston, they get all the kills. Like, they outslayed by 17 kills, I believe, in yesterday's series against Subliners and got 3 0s. They also outslayed, I think, by 17 kills against Optic and got 3 1s. So they're plus 34 in kills in their last couple of series and they're 1 in 6 map count, right? Like, that just goes to show what the issues are. Doug Sinter Martin, you could guarantee he wouldn't be outslayed anyone. You can always count on him for that, but maybe that's actually a good thing in a way because they've got to do more with their kills fundamentally. So, I mean, look, I don't know exactly what they fix with that roster because maybe they just need a bit more time. But honestly, their first round game against Optic is going to be far from easy to achieve that, especially because they play Toronto next. I don't necessarily think the minus vivid crimp move was a bad idea. If it actually clicked and they could use their kills effectively, I think they'd probably be better than they were with vivid. But there are some questions as to whether they can achieve that. And uh, look, if they go from top four, whatever it was with vivid to going top 12 with crimp, questions are going to be asked. But I still respect the decision to make the move because at least they were trying to not rest on the levels and actually try and take a step up even if it doesn't work out for them. And speaking of roster mania, just the final thing I wanted to mention here is the possibility of well, Attach and the Minnesota Rocker looking at something over the coming days. We have seen teams before make big name changes right before the start of a major tournament and it might happen again for Rocker because they have regressed substantially after their first couple of games they played. They got destroyed by the guys on Thieves yesterday and even if it's true what Envoy is saying that maybe they didn't even get a warm up scrim before map 1, that makes the game one loss for Rocket even more tragic to be honest and well Aix was saying bring Attach back in right now and if you are going to bring him back in I don't think you bring him in for fame I think you've got to make another roster change or another role change on the roster I think you've got to put fame on the SMG it might be time to get rid of Bance bring Attach in I don't know but um they can't just drop fame again and bring Attach back I feel like that's not really going to help unless the coaches stop telling Attach what to do which maybe is the way to go I don't know man but it's tough for Rocker but I just feel like if they come into this tourney with the clearly zero confidence they presently have in their team after getting destroyed the majority of the time in their last few series they played and choking that series they even played against FaZe. I can't see them having a good time at the major with this current roster of four and it might be worth a switch up because otherwise Vegas are coming for blood and they're already ahead as it stands. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.